Hello, everyone. Joanna Riley is an entrepreneur, advocate, and mentor in technology and is currently the CEO and co-founder of Sensia. She has a highly experienced background in building and scaling companies, which she attributes to her deep passion of people and building technologies that allow people to live and be their best selves. She brings her wide knowledge of the industry to better transform the way enterprise companies hire talent at her current company, Sensia. All right, Joanna, are you ready to take us to the top? I am. Very. You bet. Tell us about the company. What do you do and what's your revenue model? Is it pure play SaaS? Yeah, it's a SaaS business. Um, so we started Sensia to really change the way that companies hire talent, really for, for companies to start breaking the bias that is really kind of killed off talent in, in the end of the day and empower hiring people based on merit. And we do that all through using predictive AI. Um, and so delivering the best fit people to companies in a predictive fashion versus having humans perform hours upon hours of searching on platforms like LinkedIn or filtering through resumes. And so um, what I love is when you put math and science to the problem of hiring, it tells you that diverse people do jobs that are way different than you might think as, as a human doing search with all of our unconscious and conscious bias. AI machine learning, that's a big statement today. And, you know, people go, well, is it really or is it just a marketing thing? Like, is it a glorified like database? What is it really? So give me a real example. How do you use marketing intelligence and AI in your software? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I'm one of those people, by the way. So I <laughs> the skeptics, right? here in Silicon Valley. So we, I hear a lot of, a lot of the buzzwords. Um, we looked at this and were inspired very much. Our backend is a data platform. So we aggregate data from thousands of different sources and create golden records on candidates so that we can look at people as dynamic, as multidimensional. Every single technology in the world today, when you're finding people, when you're looking for people, you can only look at them one dimensionally. You can only say, I want people that have gone to Stanford, have worked at Google, have done this and that. But you can't say, I want someone who's, yes, gone to Stanford or schools like Stanford, but they were an athlete at Stanford. Athletes more important than Stanford. You can't do that. And so we were really inspired by Trulia. Um, Trulia aggregates data from thousands of sources for being able to allow people to search in a vertical fashion, in a multidimensional fashion. For buying homes. So being able to look at things like crime rates in school districts, we do the same thing where all of a sudden we can look at everybody's hard data, but we can also use that hard data where you've gone to school, what you do, you know, what skills you've acquired. We can use that to build derived data about you. Things like career trajectory, performance against your peers, diversity, loyalty, competitiveness. These are really what allows us to determine is somebody able to, where do they fit in, in the world of, of, you know, where do they fit as a career? But also the, we're able to look at things like, do you belong in a startup or do you belong in a large enterprise? Are you somebody who is a rising star? So you're going to start out early, but you're showing the patterns that others have shown prior that mean that you're going to end up most likely as a high performer in the future. That pattern and, recognition, though, is only as strong as the inputs you give it. So when a new company signs up for you, what access to their internal data set are they giving you that allows you to then become predictive for them? So we actually don't need them to give us any data. We sit today on 500, over 500 million people globally that we've created golden records on. We aggregate data from over 2,000, almost 2,500 different sources now. Um, and all of that is built to aggregate the information that we need to do, we need to use to figure out how you map against the global talent pool. Um, when a company, however, signs up, they are absolutely able to say, hey, we want to plug in our applicant tracking system. You can look at all those records, but we as Sensia will also update all those records instantly for them and give them the intelligence on top of those records so they can search them in a more dynamic fashion. Yeah, so they say, they say, Joanna, we're using you. Listen, Susie, she joined us three years ago. She's a freaking rock star. We need more people right now, like with the makeup of Susie. You're saying you have the ability to do that. That's right. And our, our platform, that's the interface, actually. It says tell us three rock stars. And it builds a short list of people. <laughs> You're hired. No, yeah. it builds a short list of people that are exactly like Susie, but Susie stripped of her gender, ethnicity, race, sexual orientation, disability status, veteran status. So it is literally looking at Susie as 
a number as mathematical equations. It feels are- kind of bad saying that, doesn't it? But I understand why you have to just say, you have to kind of uh, de-emotionalize the, the human, right? To look at the numbers. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What, give me, I don't want to go down every customer cohort, but on average, kind of what's a company pay you? And other companies that interviewed in this space, they do all kinds of things like number of matches per year. And there's a SaaS pricing. I mean, how do you price? Yeah, we have two models, both SaaS, one SaaS based on seats. So anyone can have unlimited search, 3,500 bucks a year seat model. Um, typically our clients are going to have over 10 recruiters. They're going to, it can sometimes rise all the way to 50 recruiters. They're going to have sourcers as well. Um, so we, Focus on companies that are enterprise size or hyper growth. So post series C, ABC. Um, the the other option, or we have our, our second product, which is our premium solution, is a SaaS model based on number of roles, and that not only automates the sourcing, it automates sourcing the engagement and outreach to candidates, and then the coordination of the first interview roles you're hiring for, not role, not seats of roles in your company you're giving access to Sensia to. Yeah. Roles that they're, the company's hiring for. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. let's say that you are Anthem, who's one of our clients. They have thousands and thousands of different roles. We're going to start with a segment and those range of contracts typically in the beginning are going to be about, you know, 50,000 in a, in a high case, a hundred thousand dollar contracts. And then they're going to rise into multi hundred thousand dollar contracts and hopefully in the future, you know, over a million dollar contracts. Yeah. It sounds like no matter which of those two options you just gave each one kind of first year ACV is kind of in that 35 to 50 grand kind of range, right? Yeah, it's closer to 50. I would say that, you know, 50, 70 is probably going to be closer. We, um, launched the platform in July, so we're pretty new. Oh, you just launched the-, the SaaS platform in July. We did. Oh, wow. Yeah. When did the company launch? September, 2017. Oh, wow. Okay. So fairly new. So, okay. Let me break this down because you didn't say founder in your bio, which tells me like something happened. What? Like, yeah, no, no, it just said CEO. So, okay. Are you, are the founder? I am. <laughs> oh, very good. Cause what was going through my head was, okay. What? I was trying to trick you. No, no, no. Sure- Attention. <laughs> what, what was going through my head was, okay, she was an EIR at a VC firm. The original founders like didn't do something. So she must've came in with around you. You are the founder. You founded it a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, I have a great team. Um, I, so I get to just actually, they are very much telling me what is what they're what we're going to do. And I get to <laughs> tell you. So that's really exciting. That's but, great. Um, I have an awesome team. And yeah. bootstrap today or have you raised? Um, we bootstrap. So I was the original investor in the company. And then we've just closed our series seed round, which is much larger than a normal seed um, however, uh, we're going to announce that in the next like two weeks. Joanna, so. I liked you. I liked you so much until you tell me now you're not bootstrapped. Now you go down two points. I know, I know, but I was bootstrapped. I was, <laughs> I launched my product, got, you know, from July to today, we have 40 enterprise customers that, yep. that have come on. We're super stoked. <laughs> we're growing with insane momentum. So, um, it's a great time. I would say, to raise when that, when you're able to put your investors on calls with tons of customers, when you're able to show them an awesome product, when, you know, I've, I've done this many times before and, uh, it's very different when you don't have those things. <laughs> That's right. No, I hear you. Um, give me a general sense. The seed round, when you say larger than average, when I think seed round, especially you're based in San Fran, I mean, I'm thinking I see seed rounds like pretty frequently in like the two to 3 million range. So when you say big, I'm thinking North of three, is that generally fair? Yeah, we're North of five. Okay. That, in terms of what the raise is. And now is it clo- It's totally closed. You're just waiting to announce. Yeah. That's great. Congrats. How long did it take from kind of finding the lead to getting all the follow on and hitting your target? Um, you know, it's not my first rodeo. Uh, the, I, I would say that I think it's totally normal. I, I don't think many people tell the truth on how long it, t- it takes to raise. Um, I, we, as I said, I launched the plot, we launched the platform in July. Um, and so July and August were really kind of my focus of build up, which is terrible. Tip number one, never ever raise funding July and August. Nobody is there ever. Um, but then September we got our lead and then it was closed by the end of September. That's great. Okay. So very good. Now, can I take the 40 customers you gave me and that kind of $50,000 average first year ACV that would put you at, I think like 160 grand a month right now, or about a $2 million run rate. You know, no, because we actually brought our, our beta customers and our, um, and some of our revenue generating customers on at the exact same time. And okay. so a number of those customers actually convert into that, that average contract value in 2019. So that will I be see. 
just, we wanted to have customer advisory board customers. We're in the talent space. And so integrations into applicant tracking systems are really important. Um, and the way to do that is you either pay a lot of money or you get sponsorship from customers. And so we purposely selected exactly who we wanted to smart to sponsor us. And then in 2019, they convert into revenue. Yeah, that's really smart. So give me but a second. I mean, we're doing really well on a revenue. Yeah. No, that's not, that sounds like a smart strategy. You cut out there though. So, so what are you at today? Are you like at 80 grand a month or 50 grand or smaller? It's, it's okay. Whatever the size is. I'm just curious. We're right. We're, we're closer to the first one. Okay. So closer to like 50 grand a month. Oh yeah. I mean, we're anywhere between 50 to hundred. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> that's good. And you expect growth wise, once you close this round, the next 12 months, you expect to grow that to what? Three X, two X. Um, you know, yeah, it, I think for us, it's, it's, um, next year we have a big goal on our head, but if we, as we accomplish kind of what we project for our December numbers is we project kind of three X to five X from, from that point. Yeah, that's great. What churns critical in a SaaS company, obviously you have a very little kind of chunk of cohort data, but any insight right now into churn? No, we have, I mean, we don't have any yet. So I will have that kind of, I'll have that knowledge. I mean, it's just for 70 days. So, yeah. um, you know, I think that for us, we want to, in the long run, as we look at the future, we want to be never above that 10% churn. In terms of revenue churn per year? Uh, that's in terms of customer churn. Um, I think revenue churn should be even lower. Yep. Yep. But you're talking annual per year and it was sorry, per year and gross, correct? Or net? Yeah. Gross. Gross. Yeah. Uh, team size today. What do you at? We're about 35. Oh However, my gosh. Yeah. Yep. However, um, I like 90% of that is all tech and product. So okay. probably more than 90%. So right now, I mean, we have so much coming in, in our technology. We have so much out already in the technology. Um, I'm through December and even the first quarter, we will have just unbelievable releases coming out in the product. So we built our whole company around intelligence, right? So being able to just know immediately when you put in a rock star, everything else is solved. Yeah. It analyzes your competitors and analyzes the stage of the company. It analyzes every company they've worked at, why they've been successful, who they're surrounded by. And it delivers that predictive slate and engages them automatically. It's kind of very magical for No, it sounds magical. I'm trying to figure out though. I mean, it sounds like you potentially put in a big chunk of your own money to start this. If you got 35 people in San Fran and you assume a conservative five grand a month salary, just your headcount there is 175 grand per month. And if you're doing between 50 and hundred, you got to make up that cash somewhere. I mean, you put in a big chunk of money then at the beginning. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. um, we don't have all of those 35 here in San Francisco too. I see. We have two, um, other locations, one Florida and one Romania. Oh, interesting. Well, uh, why the Romania connection? How'd you set that up? Um, incredible data science. Um, my CTO has built high frequency trading platforms for his the last 20 years, which are truly, I mean, they analyze so much big data. They have to make predictive decisions that cannot have error. Um, there's a lot more pressure on high frequency traders or high frequency trading platforms than, than anything in talent ever. But, um, the, uh, but he has worked with this team both in Florida and Romania for years. And so he brought them all when he, when he became our CTO and he's also one of the co-founders. Really smart. Very smart. All right, Joanna, let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Um, right now? Well, so hard things about hard things, Ben Horowitz. Um, I think that's a, a great book. I'm reading Princ principles by Ray Dalio right now. Um, who's the, CEO of, of Bridgewater and it's both talent and how do you build a team. Um, Kamal Ravikant wrote a book called live your truth, which I love. It's something you could read in like an hour, but it is amazing when it comes down to finding a career, um, and just being passionate about that career. And I love it. Not that I've ever needed, you know, not that I've ever looked for my career, but rather as I'm in one that I'm passionate about continuing that journey and finding what's important. So yeah. Number two, is there an under the radar CEO or founder that you like getting lunch with there in San Fran that many people don't know or talk about? Ooh, um, I'm super lucky. Uh, I'm part of YPO. And so I get an opportunity to be around CEOs that I am inspired by every day. Um, you know, what someone I think is fantastic is Jess Ma, the CEO of Indonero. She's incredible. I think Jess Scorpio is also fantastic. She's a CEO. Uh, she, I'm sorry, she was a CEO and, and is uh, the founder of Get Around. Um, they've just raised $300 million. Unbelievable. Um, 
Nicole Farb, founder of Darby Smart, just such an just amazing person with such an incredible vision and creativity about her. And she's able to take that creativity and apply it to success on a scale that is much larger than I think many people can kind of vision. So, um, there, I mean, I could go on forever. (laughs) That's great. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building your business? I love a company. It's called a company. Uh, it was just sold Cisco. Uh, Amy Chang, also amazing CEO to follow. Uh, they just sold for almost $300 million and a company is just super helpful when it comes down to scheduling meetings and, and um, I'm fully prepared on who I'm going to meet and what I'm going to talk about. Uh, do you pay for it? The, by the way, do you pay for their, I mean, I believe off my memory, they basically have great in like detailed profiles on executives. Do you pay for their data stream to help fuel your AI? No, we don't. You don't. Okay. Uh, and so, and mostly that's just because a lot of that data, we, what we don't do is analyze like media what is happening on your Twitter feed or stuff like that. Whereas a lot of that's kind of just like one spot, all of it, you know, it's great for executive meeting, having a face to face. It's different when, um, if I'm in the end of the day, when we're trying to build profiles or trying to build the knowledge base around somebody's career trajectory. Yeah. Number four, uh, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night? Um, I don't know why I'm, I don't necessarily need a ton of sleep. I love, love, love when I get six to eight hours of sleep, I feel completely refreshed. Um, but I can survive on very few. (laughs) All right. So what do you get like five, six today? Um, yeah, right around there. Okay. And what's your situation? Married, single kiddos? I am single, but I'm in a, I've been with my boyfriend now for three years and he has a son who is four. Um, I am Jojo in his life. Oh, that's great. He turned four last week and, uh, such a fun age. That's so, (laughs) that's so cool. At this age. (laughs) (laughs) And Joanna, uh, do you want me to ask you about how old you are? Yeah, I'm 36. 36. Okay. Last question. Take us back 16 years. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Um, you know, it's funny. I, uh, I was watching this, this show called glow was on TV and it summarized the the director summarized to one of the actresses. So perfectly what I wish I could tell myself 20, which was try not giving a shit. Um, I'm not sure I'm allowed to say that, but of course. there's something really powerful about not giving a shit is kind of the message that he gave her. And I think that's really true. We get caught up a lot of the time in, you know, caring so much about what people think. And in the end of the day, yeah, you're, you are you. Yeah. Guys, don't give a shit. You heard it from Joanna 2017 (laughs) launched her company Sensia today. They're about 40 enterprise customers doing between 50 and a hundred grand per month. So healthy growth in the first 70 days about to close around today, uh, which will be north of 5 million bucks. So pretty healthy seed around there. They've got about 35 folks based in San Fran, Florida and Romania. Again, really adding AI and machine learning to recruiters toolboxes inside of companies so they can figure out how do we hire more stars like company or like employee X, maybe a a Susie who's a rock star. Joanna, thank you so much for taking us to the top. Thank you. Thanks, David.